All right, these are just some problems that are basic pre-algebra type problems. You should be able to do them on a calculator. Most of them, sometimes you can do them in your head. This is 2 to the third power, which means 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. If you use it on the calculator, you go two carrot symbol three and that's equal to eight. Okay. Now again that is a basic pre algebra problem. But what they're wanting you to do is just make sure you know how to use a calculator. Okay, this is a negative. You can't have a negative exponent. So if you can't have a negative exponent, then you just go to the next problem, right, Miss Bradley? You change it. So that's 9 to the negative 2 over 1, because all numbers are over 1. So if you want to make it a positive, where's Meredith? I thought she was coming. Um, she's not here yet. Huh, she must be running later than I am. So that's going to be 1 over 9 to the second power, because you can't have a negative exponent. So you flip it, and 9 times 9 is what? 81. Now there's a reason for that, and we'll get into that in the amortization problems. And the amortization problems, there is a negative exponent. So that's why they're wanting you to refresh on that. Okay? All right, 9 to the 1 half power. Well, y'all should be used to this because I don't use the square root symbol. Okay? I use what? The 1 half power. So this is the square root. The reason that is is when you get on up in higher mathematics, you don't use that. Okay? You raise your number, the square root of 25 is equal to 5, or 25 to the 1 half power is equal to 5. Okay? So anytime something is raised to the 1 half power, that's saying the square root of that number. The reason that is, is because in front of all radicals, if nothing's there, it's understood to be a what? A 2. And the exponent is right here. So all you have to remember is exponent over index. Exponent over index. So if I give you the third root of 2 to the fifth power, that's the same thing as 2 to the 5 halves power. Can you lay your screen down? Okay. How can that, was that in your way? Not my way, no sir. Well, whose way was it? Mm -hmm. We usually get asked to put it down. Well, wait till we get asked, okay? <laughs> that gummit, I don't know what that was. All right. So, that is what? What's the square root of what? Nine. Three. Three. Next question. All right, what about this one? Well, first of all, it's to the negative. What do you do about a negative? You put it on the bottom. So put it, yeah, put it over one. That's right. So that's going to be uh, one twenty-five to the negative one third power. You probably saw this at one o two over one, right? <laughs> Is a blur. I don't want to talk about it. One over one twenty-five to the one third power. Now I told you exponent over what? Index. So that is one over one twenty-five. Now what's the exponent? 
exponent. Three. Three, yeah. Exponent over what? Index. Index. So what's the exponent? First power. And what's the index? Three. So it's not square root, it's what? Cube root. So 1 over the cube root of 125. What is the cube root of 125? 5. Now, if you wanted to check, if you didn't know the cube root, then you go over to your handy dandy calculator and you say 125 x to the y or caret symbol. 125 caret symbol parentheses. One divided by what? Three. Three. Enter. So these are just some little drills, and I don't even know if they have them in the homework, but whoever developed the homework, I don't know if they even put them on. This is from the study plan. So that's going to be one over five. I figured I'd go over them and give y'all a little bit of a, a break. That's why I decided to go over them. All right, got the same base and we're dividing. Okay, now if you rewrite this problem, it'll help you out tremendously. All right, here we go. I'm going to rewrite it because you might get confused if you don't rewrite it. 3 to the 10th, I don't know why this thing's acting up this morning, it hadn't usually done this, maybe it's because I'm writing so small, 3 to the 10th divided by 3 to the 8th. Now somebody tell me what we have. Common denominator. Not common denominator. Multiple. But, but same what? Common basis. This is a base, and this is a base. The bases are the same. So what do you do with bases that are the same and you're dividing? Subtract. You subtract the exponents. It's called the product, the quotient rule. And what's three to the second power? Nine. Now here, they're trying to get you used to dealing with exponents. Again, it's all about exponents. You're going into continuous uh, continuous interest. You're talking about compounded interest. You're going to go into amortization, which is payment plans, you know, monthly payments on a car, monthly payments on a house, monthly payments on a credit card. That's amortization. So you're going to be dealing with exponents. And they want to make sure you know how to use exponents, especially in the calculator. Yeah, just show up whenever. That's fine. Glad you could join us. You should have heard Zach. He was talking about you while you weren't here. <laughs> so, what is 3 to the second power? 9. Next question. All right, y'all try that one. Be careful. Remember, when you subtract the exponents, make sure you put parentheses around them because this is hook, line, and sinker time. They're trying to catch you. There's a piece of bait right there, and they're seeing if you're going to take it. And if you take it, that means you're a failure. I'm not even going to write it down. I quit. You quit already? Mm -hmm. As soon as you said algebra, I was done. One, oh, well, don't be that way. <laughs> It's not that hard. And plus, you'll be fueling Miss Bradley, and I don't feel like listening to that. 100. She's not even listening anyway. 100 to the one half divided by 100 to the negative one half. Are the bases the same? Yes. Yes. The bases are 100. So that means you're going to subtract the exponent. Now, what they're wanting you to do here is not put it in parentheses. 100 parentheses minus parentheses. One half goes in this one, and one half 
the negative goes in that one. Okay? And that's equal to 100 to the 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to 100 to the 1 fourth. Now the bait is for you not to put parentheses around this right here and for you to think that that negative is that negative right there and you get 1 half minus 1 half, which is 0. That's the bait. And that's not right. So, what is this? The fourth root of what? 100. So you punch that in the calculator. Go to your handy dandy calculator and type in 100 raised to the 0.25 power or parentheses 1 over 4. And that's equal to 3.16. Now, I don't know what they asked you. Uh, uh, it's just 3.16, I guess. 3.16. Now, they want you to write it as 100 to the 1 fourth, I think. Or fourth root of 100. I don't know how they want you to write it. But the answer is correct. Let's see what they want. I put in my calculator so the answer was 100, so I obviously did something wrong. Okay, they're asking you... Uh, that's wrong. There is <laughs> no way... My calculator says, too. There is no way... That's, that's wrong. <laughs> they're doing exactly what I just told y'all not to do. Because if you was to do it incorrectly, this is so funny, 100 to the 1 half minus 1 half, that's what you're not supposed to do. You get 100, no, because anything to the zero power is what? Oh, even if I know what I did. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, not 1 fourth. I'm thinking of 1 half times 1 half. I'm sorry. I suck. <laughs> one half plus one half is not one fourth. Why don't you say something, Zach? <laughs> oh, no. I'm one half that. plus one half. A half of pizza plus a half of a pizza is a whole pizza. Torque. I'm sorry. It's Monday. So 100 is your answer. They're right. I was wrong. I was, what are you trying to do, Hubert? Are you trying to push me over the edge? Yeah, I am. One half plus one half is one fourth. Yeah. Skyping in on yeah, sorry about that. All right, this is basic algebra. Basic algebra. I'm going to go through. Just, just forget about the problem right now. I'm going to go through and give you a little bit of a... There's plus... I know how to do this one. Subtraction, <laughs> addition, uh, multiplication, and division. And 90% of the population knows how to do these. Okay? Uh, X plus 4 is equal to 6. How do you get rid of adding 4? Subtracting. You subtract 4. And if you do it on one side, you do it where? Well, on I the know. other. And that's X is equal to 2. They said that they okay. would call me today, so um, we'll see. Um. Who's talking? <laughs> Stop talking. X minus 3 mm -hmm. is equal to 4. How do you get rid of minusing 4 or add minusing three. 3? Add three. You add 3. If you do it on one side, you do it on the other. X is equal to 7. Everybody with me? Okay, well, what about division? Well, the same thing, the opposite. If you have 2x equals 6, how do you undo multiplying by 2? Divide by 2. And if you do it on one side, you do it on the other. 
And x divided by 4, how do you get rid of multiplying by 4? You multiply by 4. And 90% of the population knows how to do this. Then where's the problem? The problem comes in when they bring in other stuff. And that's when either the teacher don't know what they're doing or the student don't know what's going on or both. Okay? One, you bring in the distributive law. Why do you bring in the distributive law? Well, the distributive law is like a hammer. Let's say you got a big block of you're making a you're making something concrete and you have a box that you're gonna fill up with concrete. Let's say you're gonna make a a post hole for a mailbox or something. And you know, one of those you put inside the house and you have with a crafty mailbox that's painted all different colors and you got a vine growing up it. It's, you know, just you're making a concrete block right here. You're making a concrete block. It's one foot by one foot by one foot. And you decide to put the concrete in there, smooth it up, put the post in it, and smooth it up where it's all clean and neat. Well, while you're doing that, your ring falls in the concrete. And you don't realize that until after the concrete is cured. How's the only way to get the ring out of the concrete? Tear it up. With a big A what? Georgia? Hammer. Oh. Okay? And you chip away at that concrete, and you chip away at that concrete. Well, if you have this, here is your concrete block. Here is your ring, and what is the two? The two hammer. is the big ass hammer. And you're supposed to chip away at this. Now the way you do that is with distributive law. So two times x is two x, two times four is eight. And now you got the problem that you started out with in pre-algebra on the previous page. How do you get rid of adding eight? Subtract. Subtract 8. 2x is equal to negative 2. Divide by 2. And divide by 2. So, and then they throw in what? And then they throw in the common terms. Common terms is just like boxes of cereal. Okay, if I have a 2x here, and I have a 4x here, what's two boxes of cereal plus four boxes of cereal? Six boxes of cereal. If I have 7y minus 3y, that's seven boxes of cereal minus three boxes of cereal, which is four boxes of cereal. But I can't take two boxes of cereal plus three cans of OIL and get five cans of OIL or five boxes of cereal. I can't do this. All right. So if I give you 2x plus 4 minus 1x is equal to 3x minus 2x. Well, then that gives us 2x Two boxes of cereal minus one box of cereal is what? One. One X plus four is equal to? Five. Uh, let's change this to four X. Four X. Four X minus two X is two X. And here's another thing that, that teachers screw up, all right? Teachers and students screw up. You got one X. I'm going to bring this over on the next page. One X plus four is equal to two X. 1x plus 4 is equal to 2x. Let's say I give you a job on the farm. And there's my barn. And your job on this, on this farm is to do nothing 
but feed the horses. Okay? And inside this 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 barn there's a corn crib, which if you don't know what a corn crib is, it's about three foot, four foot high, and it's boarded up and nothing but corn goes in it. Okay? Well, feed can go in there too. And you have the choice of a uh, 10 gallon bucket or a 5 gallon bucket. Which bucket are you going to pick? 10. You ain't never worked on a farm, have you? Okay. <laughs> Why is Miss Smith wrong in a failure in life? Why is she say she said 10 gallon bucket? Because it's heavy. Because it's heavy and it's what? You ever tried to move a washer? Yep. It's not easy, is it? Why? Cause not it's because hard. it's not heavy. It's awkward. It's awkward. A TV. You know the old TVs? Hard. You know the ones that are about three foot deep like this? Have those, you, you can't pick them up. They're awkward. All right? Same thing with a 10-gallon bucket. It's, it's awkward. So most people, 90% of the population, except Miss Smith, is going to pick the five-gallon bucket. All right? Is that because we're lazy? Or is that because... It, we can do more with a five-gallon bucket than we can with a ten-gallon bucket. We can do more with it because you can't maneuver well with a ten-gallon bucket. All right, and especially when you're trying to pour it into the little horse thing that's on the fence, little one-gallon horse thing that looks like this. It's awkward, so you'll pick the smallest bucket. So human nature is to always go with the smallest bucket. Which one's the smallest bucket? 1X. So you're always going to move the smallest bucket. Now, this is where teachers go into hyperfits. And they say, oh, my God, you're moving that on the right-hand side. You're supposed to put the X's on the left-hand side. You go to a park, and you got two kids, Jody and Susie. Okay? And this is the, let's say, what is that park down there near Finley Park? Lindley. Lindley Park. This is Lindley Park. And Jody sits on this side. You're, you're standing right here. So Jody sits on the left-hand side, and Susie sits on the right-hand side. Everybody with me? Now you go down to Star, and you go down to the park down there, and you tell Jody, Jody, you have to sit on the left-hand side of the seesaw or it won't work. How smart is that? How many of you tell your kids or your nieces or your cousins that they have to sit on this left-hand side if they sat at this left-hand side at another park? How many of you do that? None of you. Then why do you have to put the X's on the left-hand side of the seesaw? That's one of the dumbest things that's ever been taught to students. Dumbest things that's ever been taught. You always move the smallest bucket. Now, the main objective of algebra is to get X by itself, right? So you don't care about the number. All you care about is the X. You don't care about this number over here, whatever I had. I don't care. 2X. Whatever I had, it don't matter. Four. Was that a 4? Okay. You could care less about this guy. You don't care about him. All you care about is this bucket and this bucket. And you say to yourself, which one's the smallest bucket? And being lazy, being less cumbersome, whatever you want to call it, you're going to always move the smallest bucket. That's going to give you 0 is equal to 4. What's 2x minus 1x? 1x. 1x. And that will always make your variable what? It will always make your variable positive. Now take this 4. How do you get rid of adding 4? Because that's a plus right there. Take it across the river and it becomes a negative 4, however you want to say it. And you got negative 4 is equal to 1x. You don't need the 1 there. So x is equal to negative 4. And that's how you do common terms. Now, the only other thing there's left in algebra is fractions. All 
All right? Now, whenever you're dealing with fractions, the first thing you always do is clear the, 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 clear the fractions by multiplying by the common denominator. Multiply by 6. And that gives you 6 divided by 2 is what? 3x. 6 divided by 3 is 2x. And 6 times 2 is... And now you've got a pre-algebra problem like before. So, Miss Bradley and Miss Grant. Is it Miss Grant or Miss Roberts? Just Grant is fine. You just okay. call me Anna. How about that? <laughs> All right. Do <laughs> you see why algebra is not that hard? It's not that hard. It's just the way it's presented to people. And then this phobia, that's where the phobia sets in. And this is the number one place that phobia sets in is in these last three areas that I've talked about. All right? It's not that difficult. It's basic math. But the way it's presented, it's basic math in a rat maze. And it's, it's all how it's presented. So don't do a stereotype of algebra. Algebra is just like what you're doing now. It's basic math. Just the way it's presented. It can be presented as something as easy as basic math, or it can be, be, be presented as complex ratio proportions. I mean, it can be, it, it's all who presents it. And you know that as well as I do. Because yeah. 102, 102 is not a course that needs to be taken four times or three times. It's not. I had an 87, 88% retention rate in Math 102 for seven years. And that's just because of the deadheads, you'd get deadheads that come into class and they would they couldn't pass gas, so let's pass a test. <laughs> All right, so we good on algebra now? All right, algebra is not that big of a deal. So look at this guy. Now it's, it's bucket, you, do, you only got one bucket, and it's the end. So one plus n is equal to nine. How do you get rid of, take that across the river? and it becomes a minus one. Some people like the river, some people like how do you get rid of adding one. You have a work both of them work the same way. When you take something across the river, the Egyptians, the Israelis, you take it across the river, the alive person becomes what? Dead. <laughs> or a dead person becomes alive. It comes the opposite. So N is equal to what? Eight. Hey. Did you see where I got an absent notice for one or two? I'm not even worried about that. I don't even. Just just so y'all know, when do y'all need to worry about being dropped from my class? When I send you a note that I'm dropping you from my but class. But for my email, about how I didn't even so much as miss a class, matters. If I'm late by one second, the bureaucratic machine starts rolling and starts sending y'all these emails. Okay? Just ignore them. I'm not going to even, I fixed it this morning, everybody's fine. Just remember this, if you go to class every day and you got an A or B or a C in this class, chances are that's a bunch of bull crap. All right, I'm going to go to the next problem. I'm going to go to one that adds a little bit to it. There we go. Do this one. Move the smallest bucket first. There's two buckets. There's an 8y and a 7y. Is it a 6 plus 7? 8y plus 6 equals 7y minus 1. It might help if you sit further back in the back of the room. I knew so. Loser. I didn't got comfortable right here. Oh, uh, yeah. All the chairs are different. Mm -hmm. And Miss Bradley's going to explain how to do this one. <laughs> because she has on a flower. Yeah. All right. So, 8y. Eight 8y eight plus 6 equals 7y minus 1. The smallest bucket is 7 what? Take it across the river, it becomes negative 7y. So that's y plus 6 is equal to negative 1. 
We'll take the 6, cross the river, and it becomes a negative 6. And y is equal to negative what? 7. Now, how I hard have, is that? I, six. I, wait a minute. What answer did you get? Don't be saying what answer I got. Like I got some kind of different law of mathematics. You got to change and switch. You can't have a negative y. So you got to divide by negative 1. She did it backwards. Well, that's why I don't show that method. Hey, Hubert. Yes. I have to head up. Okay. Thank you for showing up today. Negative 7. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Look at there, I got it right. I see you. Alright, try that one. See she she's squinting too. What? She's closer. No, I didn't know if that plus nine on this side. Seven X plus nine. Yeah, they do look alike. I just the the division and the pluses on these things they do kind of collide. Seven X plus nine is equal to four X plus forty eight. I don't give her a hard time. I just give. You I, can tell. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. I gave Miss Smith a hard time before y'all got here today. <laughs> Why can't I subtract that? 7x plus 9 equals 4x plus 48. What's the smaller bucket? 4x. It goes across the river. It becomes negative 4x. So that's 3x plus 9 is equal to 48. The 9 goes across the river. It becomes a negative 9. 3x is equal to what? 39? Yes, sir. Divide by 3? 13. What'd you say? You broke up Never. again. What? I got 13. One, three. See there? <laughs> three. Okay, now what's that? That kind of pokes a hole in your theory that you can't do algebra. You just got one right. I thought we weren't doing algebra, to be honest. Well, this is a little drill. She's talking, and I can't hear her. What's wrong? What's the matter with her? She's muted. She turned off her mic so so we wouldn't hear her. She's probably cussing you out. Yeah, she probably is. <laughs> not probably. Definitely. <laughs> this is just a drill. You're not going to be tested on this stuff. This is just so you can work the problems on the test. Okay? I don't know how much. I don't think this is on the homework. This is on study plan. I don't know if they put this, whoever the teacher is that did the 120. I don't know this, if they put the, This is algebra for like a third. No, actually, this is some like algebra, algebra too. I learned in grade. Well, you can do it. I don't want to hear that you can't do it anymore. All right, I'm going to move on a little bit. No, I don't want to do that one. Okay, this is your next type problem. How do you undo something squared? Take the square root of it. The opposite of a square is a square root. Or you can, I'm not going to go there. X squared Now to undo a square, you take the square root of both sides. And square root of X squared is X. And the square root of 49 is 7. seven. Now, you can say that the answer is positive or negative 7. But in most, most contexts, they just want the 7. Okay? I don't think they want you to put positive or negative 7 here. I think they just want the 7. I think they will ask you for all solutions if they wanted the negative. It'll say, please write down all solutions. Well, we'll, we'll try seven. Okay. There we go. They want positive or negative seven. Okay. Thank you. So they want positive or negative. So you hit this button right here, 
and seven. My lord. Okay, so they want both. Now, do this one. This one's got an extra step, so you do it just like we did this one. You got to get rid of, you cannot, this is a, what is this? This right here is a cement block. Whenever you see parentheses, that's a cement block. Now, you don't have a hammer because there's nothing in front of it except a one. A one doesn't do anything because that, that exponent is to the second power. All right? So you have to get rid of the exponent. And you get rid of it by taking the square root. X minus 6 is equal to positive or negative what? 8. Eight. Now be careful here because you've got to bring the 6 across the river. And what does that make it? A positive 6. Now what is positive 8 plus 6? 14. What's negative 8 plus 6? Negative two. Negative two. So you got two possible answers because of this right here. And you got to remember, eight plus six is fourteen. Negative eight plus six is negative two. So here, I don't know how they want it. Comma, fourteen. Well, I'm going to read left to right. I'm confused about what happened on the x minus 6 side when we got the square root. We got the square Take root the square of square root of this. That goes, that takes that out. But they didn't change any numbers. They just got rid of the exponent. Just got rid of the exponent. That's all okay. it does. Okay. Because you can't touch. Can you touch the ring in the concrete block? No. Okay. You can't do anything with that x or that negative 6 until you bust up the block. And why is it plus or minus? Because anytime you take the square root of a negative of a, a square root of a number is positive. What's eight? What's eight times eight? Sixty-four. What's negative eight times negative eight? Sixty-four. So the answer is positive or negative eight. Because you still get sixty-four. When you do the math, you get a positive 64. So a negative 8 times negative 8 will give you 64, and 8 times 8 will give you 64. So the square root of 64 is positive or negative 8. That's where the positive or negative comes from. X either equals positive or negative 8. or X equals mm -hmm. negative. And you type that in with a, a comma. Negative 2. Comma. Why am I putting negative 2 first? Because I read left to right. Have been for about 50 years now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Take the square root of that one. That's the same type problem. How do you How do you undo a fifth power? Take the fifth root. Exactly. No, the, don't have to think much here. So u to the fifth power is equal to 32. So instead of taking the square root, you take the what? Fifth root. And if you do it on one side, you do it on the other. Now, should you know the fifth root of 32? Not many people do. I'll just go ahead and tell you it's 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. So I'm just going to give you that. So u is equal to 2. What are you, math nerd? And these oh, are just drills. That. Really? Are just, with she had a good she had a good teacher. That's why. Oh yeah, she was great. That's high school. the difference between a bad teacher and a good teacher. Don't tell me that this stuff is hard. It's not hard. It's how it's presented. Great. Where did you go to school? Who was it? Ms. Miller. Kara Miller. I believe I know her. I gotta I say, if this had been my math one or two class, I would have been in tears by now. I mean, really, honestly. Not exaggerating. All right. Simple interest. Here we go. Now, these are homework problems. All right. So do that one. You invest $2,000 in an account 
that pays simple interest. So you should take your handy dandy highlighter right now and you should highlight this right here because on a test that's going to get you if you don't see it. You invest $2,000 in an account that pays simple interest of 3% for 30 years. Now, the only problem I see here is they don't tell you in the problem when do you apply the simple interest. Do you apply it yearly? or at the end of 30 years. That's the only problem I see with the question. I'm going to do it both ways and then we'll see. Is it 3%? 2,000 times 3%. Well, that's not that's not hard to calculate because what's 10% of 2,000? 200. And what's 1% of 2,000? What? 1,000. Come on now. You just said 10% is 200. Oh, uh, so 1% would be? 500. Five, no. Five, I this is this is why people can't do simple math. What's what's See, the deal when you divide by a hundred? Tens or hundreds? You move the decimal what? One place. All right. So if you if you take ten percent, yeah, ten percent, you move it there. All right. So what is one percent? Twenty. So what's 3%? If 1% is 20, what's, th what's 3%? 60. 60, good. So if it's done at the end of the year, it would be $2,000 and what? $60, and then you multiply that by 30 years. So somebody do 2,060 times 30. Well, 2,060 times 10. Isn't it just 60? 6180. Uh, Say again. Sixty-one eight hundred. Sixty-one thousand eight hundred. Well, I can tell you right now that's not right because simple interest is not going to give you such a big hunk of money. All right. So they're doing it at the end of thirty years. That's what they're doing. So they're not doing it times one year and then multiplying it by thirty. So and this is common sense. You know that simple interest. If you're going to give a friend alone are you going to end up getting 61,000 at the end of 30 years? No. So 2,000 times 3% is equal to 2,060. And at the end of 30 years you got $2,060. They owe you $60 in interest. Now that's that's the two types of questions. This is for 30 years, uh, compound or not compounded, but calculated yearly. And this is just over 30 years. It's 26. Is it 2660? 30. No, it should be 2060. 2060. Okay. Over 30 years. Now, the way that the question is written, it could be taken both ways. So that's why I did it, and we're going to see. I think the answer is 2060. Okay, then I'll type in 61800. I think it's 3800. 3800? Where do you get 3800? Because I just compounded the interest. I just did the $60 times 30 years. Because all you're adding. $60. The interest times 30 years. Well, that could be done. That's the third way you could do it. This is what she did. She did $60. That's the interest over one year. And multiply that by 30 years. And that would be 1800 
plus 2,000 is 3,800. Okay? That way you're not gouging the person that you're dealing with. This is gouging. I don't know how to spell gouging. That's right, I-N-G. Gouging, I-N-G. I think so. This is when you gouge somebody right here. And you're making, what, 30 times what you're supposed to make. So the answer is probably 3,800 then. Because I don't think it's 61,800. So you need to write down when you're doing one of these problems to take the interest, multiply it by the years, and add it to the principal. 3,800. Good job. He said take the interest, multiply. Take the interest, multiply it by 30 or for how many years, and then add it to your principal. And that way it's not gouging your person that's trying to help. Calculate the amount of money you'll have at the end of the indicated time period, assuming that you earn simple interest. You deposit 37. All right, do this one. Now, the 4.6%, that's not 4.6, it's 0 .04612. 0 .046. So you need to make that note. You need to say, guy is simple interest and R is equal to 0 0.046. This one sounds better because it says annual interest. Yes. So that this one, if you look right here, it gives you an indicator. The previous question did not. So I'm going to take 3,700 and multiply by 0 0.046. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the only way you can do this is with a calculator because you'll work yourself to death if you try to do it without a calculator. So, 3,700 times 0 0.046, 170.2. You're going to multiply that by what? 15 years. Multiply that by 15 years and add that to 3,700. So multiply that by? 25.53. So I'm getting there. Multiply by, um, I don't forgot what I was doing. 15. That's good, 25.53, and then add it to 3,700. Now this question is written a whole lot better. It's not as vague as the front, first question we did. What I get? 6253. Suzanne deposits $3,000 in an account that earns simple interest at an annual rate of 2.6. 2 Derek deposits Three thousand in account that earns compound interest at an annual rate of two point six and is compounded annually. Oh, five year period. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down what we have. Okay? Principal for Suzanne is three thousand. Um 2.6 is her rate, and annual rate, so, but T is five years. Now for Derek, the principal for Derek is 3,000. Compound interest, annual rate, 
n is equal to 12. That was compounded annually, sorry. 1. n is equal to 1. And t is equal to 5 years. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure hers. And that's going to be 3,000 times 0 0.026. I got 78 times what? 5. And add that to 3,000. I got 33.90. What'd y'all get? I'm doing year by year because it wants that chart. Uh, 390, yes, sir. The fifth year. And then the other is A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power, which is going to be 3,000 times 1 plus r is 0 0.026 over 1 raised to the 5 times 1, which is 5. So I'm going to do that on the calculator. So that's 0 0.026 divided by 1 plus 1 raise that to the fifth power and multiply that by 3,000. Mm. 34,10,81. Now what you're going to find out is compound interest always trumps simple interest. To do this problem, we have to do the year mark of every one. Yeah. So for the first one, for Derek, would we do 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.026 over 1? Raised to the first power. Okay. And one then times 1, 2 the times The second one. year, it would be 2 and 2 and 3 and 3. Okay. Yeah, this would be 1 times 1. Uh, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, and 1 times 5. That's the only thing that would change on Derek's is this right here. So make sure I understand right. Well, you write it down like if we're doing the second year. It would say 3,000 times. Okay, this doesn't change. That doesn't change I, at all. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I'm plugging it in right. So that'd be 1 times 1, 2 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4. Well, if times n five. times t, time would be 2 years, and n would also be 2, right? So it would actually n would be, be 1. It's only compounded what? Compounded annually. n is equal to 1. If it was compounded semi-annually, n would equal 2. If it was compounded monthly, n would be 12. Okay. So that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is, since you're doing it in a chart, the only thing that changes is this highlighted right here. Just grant. Okay. Let's see. Okay. That's the only thing that changes. And make a note right here. Compound interest will usually trump simple interest. And what usually trumps compound interest? Um, Continuous. Have you ever seen the movie... Uh, 
two twenty two. It's a good movie. It's a it's a suspense. It's not a horror movie. It's just a suspense drama. It's about a. It's about quantum physics and and a and a, a star that goes nova, and it affects the Earth. And it's a real good movie. Anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> I watched it last night. And it was good. Me and my son watched it. My son was like, "Daddy, how can that happen?" I said, "It's it's quantum physics." And he said, "What's that?" I said, "When you when you make a decision." Like when I when I graduated high school, I made a decision to go to Tri County Tech. I could have went in the military, I could have went to Clemson, I could have went there's three or four different decisions I made there. One meant one decision I made out of two or three. Each decision, in theory, has another reality. Like there's a Hubert that gra- that graduated and went into the military. There's a Hubert that graduated and went to Clemson. Instead of going to Tri County Tech, you're dealing. This reality is the one that went to, and it's a little bit out of the box. It's thinking like in terms of time and like if you could go back in time, kind of like those realms. So don't answer. Don't be a redneck and say, what if you could go? What if you could go the speed of light? Could you go back in time? No, you hit a tree. Okay, that's a redneck. That's a redneck answer. Okay, don't ever say that if somebody <laughs> asks you a question. You got to think outside the box, okay? How did you know what I was thinking? Yeah, exactly. All right, so that's that question. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fill all that out because that is not a test question. I would not give you this on a test because it's a lot of what time and a lot of busy work. I still can't make it work either. So here is this is a test question. So write it down. The 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 the, uh, the simple interest is the one that says simple interest annually. If it has simple interest annually, that's a test question. I'm not going to give you that test question that's very vague. All right. This is a test question because it doesn't ask you to do a chart. It just asks you what is it. So I'm going to let y'all do this one. Have you heard from Sherry Moore from 120? From who? From Sherry Moore from 120. Yeah, she just typed in. Why? I, we were supposed to hang out on Sunday. I haven't heard from her, and I was just worried if you heard anything. Uh, she worked from like her. 85 hours last week. Yeah. So just, She works she like, like 60 hours something. a day. Yeah. There's only 24 in a day. <laughs> I've had students like that. So, okay. I had an ex-mother-in-law like that, too. Oh. You ever had? You ever met somebody that's worked 80 hours a day? Mm-mm. You ain't never met nobody like that? You will. I have pushed 80. You will. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't I'm, I'm, they also did it with snow going uphill both ways, with swine flu and, and oh, yeah. Hello, Hubert. Your evaluations are open. Mm -hmm. That's one of the lead bureaucrats at Tri-County Tech. He knows I ain't got no use for him. We had a meeting one time, and him and I locked our arms over the horns, and ever since then, he don't communicate with me very often. I think he got mad when I said, why don't you get a real job? (laughs) Did I tell you I got a job at Clemson next week? Good. No, you didn't. I'm glad. I'm nervous. It's very competitive.
So for n, it does it once annually. So is n one or is n seven since it's seven years? T is seven years. Remember I told you in the notes. Look in your notes. I am. So I'm looking. T is always in years. Annually means one. N is one. So, I'm going to go ahead and set it up. First of all, A, I'm going to put the formula over here. A is equal to P1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say P is equal to 7,000. That's 7,000 right there. 8% R is equal to 8%. Now I don't want it written as 8%. I want it as point what? 0.8. Okay. That's that. And T is what? 7 years because T is always in years. Always. And then N is right there. N is equal to 1. So you take that information, plug in what? Chug. Plug and chug. 7,000, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 1 raised to the 1 times 7. Now you don't have to do anything except you use your calculator now. So take your handy dandy calculator. I work on the inside out. Clear. 0 0.08. Now I know I've got three degrees. I know that 0 0.08 divided by one is 0 0.08. I know that. But I'm doing it to to get you into the ritual because n is not always going to be one. Okay? So divided by one equals and then I add that to 1 equals and inside the parentheses I got 1.08 and I'm going to raise that to the seventh power and I'm going to multiply that by 7,000 and that is your answer. Okay, Good job. Miss Bradley, did you get it right? Did you see what he did? Yeah, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You've got to do Okay. You, okay, you have just said why people get these problems wrong. They've got to get it down in the calculator. All right? So we're going to do this problem again until everybody gets the keys down in the calculator. The process, the methodology, and the calculator. You don't miss Do we do any math here as far as brain math? No. The only brain math that we did is 0 .08 divided by 1 and 1 times 7. We did that in our heads. That's it. The rest of it is calculator. So if you don't have the calculator down to a, you know, doing this, then it's not going to work. So we're going to do it again. So let me go over here. And this is a very, very, very common thing that happens in this section. So that's 11,000. Oh, shoot. I get so tired of switching between... Eleven nine nine six seven seven. Next question. There you go. So when would the end not be one? It says monthly, semi-annually, daily, quarterly. Okay. It'll say it. Use the compound interest formula to compute the balance in the following account after a stated period of time, assuming interest is compounded what? Annually. Annually. So you take your highlighter. So N is equal to 1 here. P 
is 12,000. I don't mind giving you this information because this isn't the problem with students. The problem is calculator. R is equal to 0 0.037. T is equal to 23. And N is equal to 1. I got another person signed up for my kickstart this weekend. Made me happy. How many do you have? So far, three. The people are stupid. They don't take that class. I know. I'm telling you, anybody that's come to college for anything. I know. Well, not only that, high school, homeschoolers. I mean, the semester's starting. People need to. I would highly suggest you do the 110, Zach, if you think about it. Yeah. You have no idea what I'm talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. How do you know year. what I'm talking about? The so kickstart. Was... You're talking about my kickstart program? No, you're talking about 110. College Math 110. That's, that's, uh, you need to look up, go to my Facebook and look up my uh, kickstart program. I offer yeah. a one week or two week, depending on how long you want to do it, in college algebra. And that would be perfect for you because that's what kills students in first semester calculus. They forget their algebra. So I'm just saying you might want to do it if you're going to take calculus. You might want to do that one week refresher. How much is it? Yeah. That's not one week. It's, it could be one week, two weeks, or three weeks, depending on how long. It's about, about 10. Yeah. Excuse me. 10 modules, 10 videos, all the way up from pre algebra, all the way up to college algebra. Solving systems of equations. So, Hubert, yes. Okay. What'd you get for the last the, the last answer? Can you get and, back to? Your, oh please? Lord. I got it. What's your name? The last I, answer. I, what was it? One one nine nine six. Hold on. The last answer was one one nine nine six nine nine six point seven six nine nine point seven seven. I got seven six. I got seven seven yeah. seven. Seven six nine nine whatever it got to be. Yeah, you got it. Does it count for anything for talking? Do we get a card? How much? But students take the placement test and just score better. How much is it? Yeah, major engineering. Don't tell them. I wait till they go see it. Well, I'm thinking about taking it just for my own good. Oh yeah, uh, the 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 college algebra is a hundred. Um, undecided. <laughs> I graduate. She's undecided. I'll tell you why she's undecided. What? It's because she had a bad experience with a 102 teacher, and she don't know what her own capabilities are. Well, I got accepted to medical school for ETSU, but because of a craptastic teacher, I got an erroneous failing math grade for 102. I got a 57, and it took me over a month to get someone in administration to look at and review my case. And she had an A. And I ended up with a 94 in the class, which was my true grade. But because it took them so long, I missed my application entry and acceptance into the nursing program and medical school. And I lost six scholarships and I lost my position into the Women and Children Succeeding program. And my entire future went. So now I'm kind of in limbo. At the end of this semester, I graduate with my Associates of Science, and because I couldn't go into the nursing program on time, at the end of next semester, I'll have my Associates of Art, but I have to wait a whole semester before I can reapply for all my stuff. Why do you have to wait, though? You should be able to apply for the spring for the nursing program, shouldn't you? Yeah, but you can't do that until fall. And it's screwed her up. In September, yeah. So I have to be in limbo for an entire semester before I can. That's the only thing about the nursing program. If one person screws you up, up That's true. the whole nursing program just implodes on you. You ain't got a chance, and that's what happened to her. I believe that. They was going to screw me. I didn't think I was going to get in the program this semester, but um, they screwed me. I, was, I thought I was going to get my associates of science. 
my I got me some vibes. I didn't even get to take. And then I only had to take like a computer class to get the social science thing. Well, and I was gonna have to wait a whole semester for that because somebody didn't tell me I needed a computer class. Well, okay. the exact opposite happened with me. She told me that I needed another English and another math when, in fact, I had well over those requirements. So I don't get to walk until May of next year. Okay. And she's fighting that now. All right. So here we go. 0 0.037 divided by 1. Y'all know that's 0 0.037. And then 1 times 23 is 23. So I'm going to just skip a couple of steps by doing some mental math there. And we get 1.037. Raised to the 23rd power multiplied by 1200 or 12,000. There you go, 27,675.32. Now, do you see why the calculator is so important? If you're all over the place with the calculator and you don't have it as a streamlined method, you're going to second guess yourself. 27675.32. And you can do these all day. Okay? Now I'm going to scoot over to, I want to scoot over to one that's not compounded annually. There we go. All right, I want you to do this one. Where is, where is uh, Meredith? Where is she? She's still there? Hello. Okay. The microphone is just showing Zach. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Zach, I'm going to send you the, uh, I'm going to send you my uh, website and you look at it, okay? Okay. I think, it's, I think you ought to look at it because you can talk to any of my students that have taken calculus the, the the reason people have problems in calculus is because they don't know their math. I meant their algebra. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to send it to the group. Mm, Hubert, mm. I got to leave early. Okay, I, I, fine. Get out of here. Pick up my root right. Okay. P is equal to 13,000. T is equal to six years. R is equal to 0 0.06. Meredith, what is, what is N? Um, four. Good job. Yay. You're a winner. All right. I'm sorry. So A is equal to 13,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 6. Again, I'll give you all this. The calculator is what will get you. So I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator and give you all a couple of minutes. Some crazy shenanigans right there. That's why you got to get it down to a. Please <laughs> stop sneezing. Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. If I try to do my total of 0.015 to the 24th and add one, it just gives me one. What the fuck is that? Because it was some crazy exponent. Did you get something huh. right too? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let me see what I get. 18,000. 0 0.06 divided by 4. Do you do these first? Times I just did plus that. 1 uh, raised to the 24th power. That's because I'm stupid.
multiplied by 13,000. That's my answer. That's what I got. Now that I did it right, that's what I got too. See, what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm compounding the interest year after year after year. And when I have a problem that's only six years, I can do that. And I come out with the same answer. Sometimes my sense is a little bit off, which I think in Why are you that, doing it separately like that? That's the way my brain sense? why I'm not good at this kind of stuff. I see the okay. formula. I mean, I see and I understand what you're doing. Okay. And that's your answer there. Let's see if we can find another compound different that you can see. Meredith, do you see the difference now? I do, yes. Okay. Um, oh, look at this one. I'll let y'all do this one. You don't see this very often. Banks don't do this. N is equal to what? Three sixty-five. What else do you notice about this? The N is 365, but what else do you notice? What's an annual APR? The R is what? 0.02%. No, it's just usually if the bank is going to compound daily, they're going to lower the what? They're going to lower the interest because they are not in the generosity business. Sixteen thousand. One plus 0 0.02 divided by 365 multiplied by 365 multiplied by 3. I don't know if you want to do this one one by one, Miss Bradley. Is it going to be a big, big number? That's what I, I you don't see know. that? <laughs> Three years APR. Yeah, you see daily compounding. That's. I mean, I could do. It, don't get me wrong, but who's yeah, honest? but it'd take you forever. Point zero two divided by three sixty five equals one. Equals raised parentheses three times three sixty five close I'm gonna enter multiplied by sixteen thousand. Oh my god, what the Felicia is that? So not that much money. Why? Because they lowered the interest rate. Nothing's what? Nothing's free. free. They're not going to give you the baby with the bath water. You can't have your cake and eat it what? Can't have your cake and eat it too. They're not going to give you 8% interest compounded daily. They're not going to do that. 16, 989.36. 16989.36. I got a check mark. <laughs> Let me find a compounded continuously for you. Or continual, whatever. There we go. Now look in your notes because I gave you this one last week. The formula, I think, if I can remember correctly, because I don't use it that much. 
this is less used. It's usually used by bigger bigger banks. A is equal to P E to the R T, I think. That's right. Somebody check. That's right. Okay. So we got three problems. N, I meant T is equal to one. T is equal to five. And T is equal to 20. Continuous constant. 17,000. E to the point zero four seven five times one seventeen thousand times E to the point zero four seven five times five. 17,000 e to the point zero four seven five to the 20th or times 20. So again, all this is on the calculator. Yeah. So you're going to have to use a calculator on each one. So second function, natural log. I can do the first one because I know what 1 times 0 0.0475 is. It's 0 0.0475. And enter. Multiply that by 17,000. Seventeen eight twenty six ninety nine. Eight twenty six. Now you could actually look here. This is a trick I learned in the war. Second entry, second entry. Now you can just go back here and put times five and then multiply by seventeen thousand. Twenty one thousand five fifty seven twenty seven. And then the last one, I hit second function. Second entry, second entry. And now I type in instead of the five, I type in two, second insert, zero. Of course, you don't have to do that. I'm just saving myself some steps. Multiplied by. 17,000. Leave that money in there. You make some money, don't you? 43,957 dollars and six cents. Now, 
That's your three answers. That's right here. Everybody look. That's right here. That's your three answers. Now, what is this? That's your annual percentage yield. Annual percentage yield is your actual interest over your total. So over here, how much interest we got? 826.99 divided by 17,826.99. Somebody do that for me. I'll do it. Where did you write that at? I don't see it. Where? The, um, the interest over the total. Where is it at? Right here. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Oh, you so, wrote it at the bottom. Oh, down here, yeah. 826.99 divided by 17, 826.99. 4.64%. 4.64%. I'm only a little bit confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How did you get 826.99? Okay, what's the interest? What did the bank give you for putting that $17,000 in the bank? 826. How much did you put in the bank? A you put seventeen thousand in the bank. You with me? Yes. How much did you make? Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Oh, okay. I okay, got it. That's the interest that you accumulated. Okay. That All makes right, sense. and you divide it by the total. This is the total. So okay. eight twenty six ninety nine divided by seventeen eight twenty six point ninety nine. And that gives us now, is it close? Yeah, most of the time it's going to be close to what they're giving you. Okay, so y'all do these two. I'm going to erase this. Oops, no. I'm going to erase this. Y'all do these two. The interest over the total. So twenty one thousand. Oh gosh. Twenty one thousand five fifty seven point twenty seven minus seventeen thousand. Really. <laughs> I got to hit equals on the calculator. I can't hit enter. I have to hit this. Okay, that's not going to work. Did I type in something wrong? Oh, I know. Minus there. There we go. All right, there's my interest. So that's 40. I'll write it down here for you. 45. 57. Point twenty seven divided by twenty one thousand five fifty seven point twenty seven. So I'm going to divide that by divided by twenty one thousand five fifty seven point twenty seven and enter. 2.11%, no, 21.14%. Everybody with me? Is that yeah. what y'all got? I had a 2.11, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to move it over twice. Okay. 21.14. Well, is that, feasibly, is that feasibly correct? Well, yeah, but he kept it in for how much? Five years. 
Well, the annual percentage rate is set up on what? What's the A stand for? Annual means yearly. So this is done by five years, so naturally it's going to be bigger. And then this one, I'm just going to do it with the calculator. Um, let me hit this. 43, really? 43. 957 minus $17,000 is that number divided by 43, 957.06. 61.3%. .3%. So basically, they're, they're, they're doing what with their money? Well, 61%. They're doing something good with their money, but they're leaving it in for a certain amount of time. I don't know. Let's see how they answered this. Balance in the account after one year is 17826.99. Five years is 21, 557.27. Really? 21, 557.27. And the last one, 43,957.06. Oh it might just ask the annual for the first year. I doubt, I don't know if it's going to ask for all three. So let's see. 4.64. Absolute increase. Starting principal. I might need to put it over 17,000. I might have messed up there. What's 820? Let's do 826. 826.99 divided by 17,000. I might have messed up there. 4.86. Let's try that. I got one of my balances wrong. That's it. I'm sorry. So it's not the new amount, it's the original amount. So make a change on that. Your APY, APY, that's why I'm not an accountant. APY is equal to your interest over your principal. Okay? Interest over the principal, which I was using the 17. 826, it's a 17,000. So let's redo this one. If it, it's going to ask for to do each one, next question. Yeah, it only does the first year, so you don't have to do all three. Okay? Who has questions? All right, ask any questions. I'm going to turn off the recorder now if you've got any questions.